Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, and I gotta say, I don't think I've ever been that hype for an arc that revolved around literally just talking, but th th this whole election arc was friggin' hype, but regardless, we're gonna be talking all about episode 6 of Kaguya-sama season 2, but before we get into that, I do, as always, want to give a big thank you to those of you who shared last week's video over on Twitter. At Janime, at Similarity, at Darkfire Player 4, at Bubba Lover, and at Matt 87 Eagle. Thank you all so much for sharing last week's video over on Twitter, everybody. And if you too would like to have your name shouted out in next week's Kaguya-sama video, then be sure to share this video around on the internet, and then tag me at Jojo Talks Too Much over on Twitter, and I will be sure to shout out the first five of you in next week's video. Now then, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get into it. So like, comment, subscribe, protect. Yes, indeed, we must protect Miko Ino. I was not <laughs> anticipating liking this character as much as I did, especially by the end of the episode, but my god, like I've, okay, when this season started and we started getting like sort of introduced to the new normal of like the the student council might disband there's this new character she's a bit of like an authoritarian uh, authori uh, authoritative dick is the word i'm looking for she's a bit aggressive you know like she seemed like a jerk and i, I i'm i'm not about like authority's good but that level of authority not so good so i was kind of like nah i i don't like this character but then slowly that you started to see Little, little pieces to Miko that made you go like, okay, like, there's something to this character. Something about her is interesting enough and engaging enough that I want to know more. And her buddy's cool, too. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to lie to you. I forget her friend's name. I, I don't quite recall it. I didn't even write it down. What a fool I am. Top-tier anti-tuber. JoJo talks too much. Doesn't even write the names of the characters he's supposed to talk about down. Regardless, um, I really like these two. And I was genuinely sort of intrigued to see how this whole assembly went, especially when we opened the dang thing, with Ishigami saying that, like, he, he wants to destroy Miko. Like, he wants to make sure it's a decisive victory over her. So I'm thinking, like, okay, Ishigami has something against her. And, and uh, Shirogane even says, like, okay, what, like, you do have some connection to this person. Like, what is the deal with you? Like, what is, like, what do you have against this girl? Like, we don't really know her. Like, what is, what, what is she about? What is, what is her damage? Like, why are you so intent on destroying this girl? And I'm thinking, like, maybe he had a crush on her and she didn't reciprocate. Or maybe, like, she, like, badmouths him all the time. We do gather, like, I mean, the last, the first time she's introduced, she calls Ishigami a burnout. So we know, like, there's bad blood there, but we don't necessarily know why. And we it's not like we find out why or anything. It's just that Ishigami is basically attempting to protect her by destroying her. And that seems counterproductive. But it actually makes total sense in the narrative. Like, Shirogane realizes what Ishigami's trying to do when he sees Miko go up on stage. And we'll get into that in just a sec, because I really do think that that... The, the way that they handled uh, stage fright in this particular episode is absolutely brilliant. We will get there in just a sec, but I love that Shirogane is, is, is so close with Ishigami now that he's able to read this man like a book. Like, I didn't even know why Ishigami was so intent, but, but Shirogane, who's normally kind of aloof, and by kind of, I mean very, he's able to be like, oh, okay, so you are doing this to protect her. I get it. Um, you want to make sure that she doesn't look like a fool on stage. So, yeah, it, it leads to this awesome moment where Shirogane and Miko throw down in a debate. And it, it genuinely, I don't know, it, it was charming to see Ishigami care enough that he, he knew, like, if Shirogane got in her face and, and made this a decisive victory, it would rile up Miko just enough to get her to get her point across to conquer her stage fright and to actually maybe start to gain some groundswell as a potential candidate. Like, he just didn't want her to bomb on stage. He, he wanted her to at least have a chance. I like that. It, it's an interesting little uh, nugget. I feel like he could have maybe helped her out in a myriad of different ways. This seems like kind of a big workaround, but it's Kaguya. The whole thing is a big workaround, so we, we gotta roll with the punches and just laugh, and that was the whole point. But this time it wasn't laugh, it was like almost a cheer. Especially 
when when Kaguya shows the difference between the two groups, like when when Miko's friend goes up and gives a speech, like nobody's paying attention. Although credit to her, she was able to deliver that speech with a lot of conviction. But Kaguya is so smart, like she taps on the damn mic and draws attention. I would tap on the mic, but it would spike the friggin' audio, so I'm not gonna do that. But <laughs> yeah, she taps on the mic and it gener generates feedback so it gets everybody's attention and they look up at on the stage and then the feedback dies down and then Kaguya starts to speak. We also see Chika like pur purposely positioning teachers into anti-Shirogane factions of the school so that when they start to talk amongst themselves, the teachers shut it down so that Kaguya has full attention. Like it shows the difference not only in skill, but in experience between Miko and her, her buddy and the rest of the student council as we know them. It was, it was a really solid moment. Th there was a lot of great, just in general, great um, visual storytelling. Like like the way that you can see how skilled and how much more experience our group have by comparison to Miko, just by watching what they do. And the best part of the episode, in my opinion, is when Miko goes up on stage and gets the worst case of stage fright I have seen in a while. Now, when I was in high school, I was in a theater group, and the first time you go on stage, like, if you go on stage and there's nobody there, it's a cool experience. You're like, whoa, like, I'm so high up, all the chairs and stuff, like, you can imagine people there, and, and you just sort of feel, like, energized, but the instant you walk out to a stage and there's eyes on you, even if you're the most confident dude in the room, something about that many eyes on you is scary. And the way that they actually like pan the camera out i gotta give my kudos to the director like shinichi omada like absolutely nailed the scene where the camera pans back and and you slowly see miko getting smaller and smaller in the pov of the camera just pulling it back pulling back and the stage looks bigger and bigger and bigger and she gets smaller and smaller and smaller and that is what stage fright feels like like i couldn't believe how well they handled it and then it comes back around when shirogane manages to get miko back to her feet manages to get her riled up to get the speech going and the camera starts to pull back in starts to pull in and in and in you see miko getting bigger and bigger and bigger as she starts to become as big on of a presence on stage as shirogane brilliant I loved it. Like, I just loved it. Because you guys know me. Anything with the stage, I like. I get a little bit excited because I'm like, oh, something I actually have some level of experience with. Yay. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not a complete idiot today <laughs> anytime there's a stage. Uh, or colors. Y'all know me. I'm, 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 I'm a color boy. I like my color, uh, color symbolism. Regardless, um, yeah, seeing Miko on stage, seeing Shirogane in particular, like, step up. That's my boy right there. Like seeing Shirogane be like, okay, I'm going to help her by purposely riling her up. And I like, not even like, I love, I love that she knows what's up. Like when Miko's like, what is your damage? And then like looks at Shirogane and he smiles. He's like, go ahead. And you can tell Miko's like, oh, you son of a bitch. I know exactly what you're doing. And it works still. I love that. I love that she comes to accept him as the president like this whole arc is so brilliant it's so good let it never be said that kaguya is just a comedy it is a very funny comedy don't get me wrong but it's got heart to it like it's got and it's got like hype to it in weird places too i will never like i will never get over the fact that this show has me hype over speeches and people dancing around the idea of saying I love you to somebody. Like, that's what we're getting hype over. A potential love confession and two people having a debate for a student council presidency. We're hype as hell over it. I just need you to know that. Then by the end of the episode, we have the, the second half, uh, the results. And Kaguya almost falls apart here. She is like like runs away when when she realizes just how close this was like the idea that shirogane in an attempt to just be a good dude almost threw away his presidency it was very close and kaguya seeing this is like well i, I never really had a doubt this is fine meanwhile chica's like i'm pretty sure i just gave myself an ulcer i'm panicking that was scary and, and Kaguya's like, no, it was fine, I'm fine, everything's fine, I'll be right back. And she walks away, and then as soon as she's out of view of everybody, she runs and bolts right to Hayasaka, best girl Hayasaka, 
she runs to Hayasaka and there's this sweet moment where Hayasaka just embraces Kage. And can we get some some respect? Put some respect on my girl's name. She does her best. Yeah, Chika ruins it by like running into both of them and knocking Hayasaka aside. And then like knocking poor, poor, uh, poor Kage to the ground. And she's like, Kage, is it your stomach? Blah, blah, blah. Like, what's wrong? And like, it, it, yeah, that was hilarious. Don't get me wrong. I burst out laughing. Chika and Hayasaka are in a battle for best girl for me, like, at all times. But I just need Hayasaka to get some shine because she is so over the, the Shirogane Kaguya relationship. And when I say over, I don't mean as in, like, I hate this. Like, it's more, it's more of her just being like, just talk. <laughs> like, like, when we see her later... When we see Kaguya in the hospital, the hospital bed, in the, the sick, the sick ward, basically just laying in bed, recovering in the nurse's office. And uh, Hayasaka is just like, you know, you're telling me all these things. Like you're telling me how you feel. I'm not Shirogane. <laughs> like when she whispers in her ear, like, hey, if you feel that way, maybe you should just talk to the person that you're feeling these feelings about. And as she says that, she dips out the window as as Shirogane walks in, leaving the two of them to have their moment in, in peace. And, like, she's still listening in because she's Hayasaka and she's clever like that. But just, Hayasaka does not get the respect she so richly deserves. Like, like Hayasaka, best girl, keeping her eye out for, for Kaguya, being there, even though Kaguya can be a whiny brat sometimes. We love her, but she can be. And Hayasaka is just like, that that's my that's this is who I serve and not only that she's my friend and I'm gonna protect her and I just Hayasaka's just the best and yeah we get that cute ass little scene where where Shirogane asks Kaguya to uh, be his uh, his vice president again and I okay I am very certain now like the way that this season has been progressing and how much better I, I I find season two like than season one. Honestly, like I like season one. I love season two, and I'm really thinking that either this at the end of this season or somewhere in season three, like the way that the relationship between Shirogane and Kaguya has been progressing, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. This is the only way. And it's just, I just feel it in my bones. Like, like that scene where, she, where he says, like, like, cause she says, like, he's just nice to everybody. It, it's, it stopped being like, and like he, when he says, like, you're, I need you specifically, you. And the scene last week where, like, no matter what question you ask me, the answer will be yes. Like the the fireworks scene from like back in season one. And like every little scene in season two, like every scene in season two has been like so close to the confession. And here we're not so much close to the confession, but the idea that these two genuinely need each other and are coming to grips with the fact that they are better together. So maybe one of them should just say it. I have a feeling whenever they do, it's going to be a draw, but I just like, it's going to be like a like same time type of thing. I don't know what I do know is it, I I kind of hope it happens soon honestly like like the way that this like this episode ends like I was like if it happened now I'd be okay with that like genuinely like I was I'm so like actually you know what no when it happens it's got to be the biggest most bombastic shit I have ever seen I have ever seen like I need fireworks I need explosions I need like a Gundam wing to appear from on high and whisk them away like it's the end of Greece or something I don't know all I know is I ship this shit to the moon and back and seeing her give the okay I don't know why that got me so hyped and so happy but it did like the fact that she knew she couldn't say anything in that moment because she was too like over, like overcome with emotion, so she just gives the okay, and Shirogane is like, yeah, like he gets excited about it. Like, why are they so cute? Why are they so cute? Okay, I gotta wrap up this video before I keep rambling on about how much I ship this. Question of the day today. Ooh, uh, question of the day. What's your favorite rom com? 
uh, specifically anime. What's your favorite rom-com anime? Let me know in the comments. And with that said, we've reached the end of the video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then don't forget to boop the up snoot and share if you care. And if you want to see me rambling even more, then feel free to follow me on Twitter or join our good folks Discord, both of which are linked in the doobly-doo. Lastly, if you're feeling generous, consider checking out our Patreon page to help support this channel. Speaking of which, I'd like to give a big thank you to our lovely patrons, such as... iZevi, Alex, Andrew W, Branson C, Calvin A, Crowbar of Irony, Daniel G, Deep Not That Deep, Digger the Fox, Dominic G, Emily, Ionos, Urza, Ginkotaku, Godzilla Fan, No For Nothing, Maria T, Marshall B, Mater, Mirth Mouser, Nymad, Cell, Shadow Creative, Stephen G, The Suavest Orange, Tristan G, and Veridan. Thank you all so much for your continued support over on Patreon, and once again, thank you for checking out today's video. Hope you guys have a lovely day, and until next time, you stay classy, Anytube, and wash your dang hands.